Hey, I'm Rick Gardner, creator of Crabs in a Bucket. And I'm Warren, producer. And this is how to play Crabs in a Bucket. Crabs in a Bucket is a shedding type card game for two to six players. It takes about five to 15 minutes and the goal is get rid of your hand. All right, so in the game we've got a bunch of different components, including the rule manual. I'm playing that and a bunch of cards, including six rule cards, 22 joker crabs, and last but not least, 52 suited cards. So after shuffling the deck, this is how you're gonna set up a game of crabs in the bucket. Typically, the winner is gonna be the dealer, but if this is your first time playing crabs, whoever has seen a crab in real life last will be the honorary dealer for the first game. After every player has been dealt seven cards, you'll place the remaining deck on the deck spot in the playing map, and you will flip over the very first card to determine the start of play. If the first card that you flip over is a Joker Crab, go ahead and place that card in the Joker pile and flip again until you find a regular suited card. So the player to the left of the dealer is going to start play and then play will proceed clockwise. Remember the goal is to get rid of your entire hand and be the first person to zero cards. The most basic way to get rid of your cards is via matching on the discard pile. So here we have a five of clubs. That means that I can either match by suit and play a club or I can match by number and play a five. There is a standard 52 card deck within the game these can all be matched by suit or number. So every card in the deck, ace through 10, has a special ability called ascending run. What this means is once I match, I can then discard any cards that are in the same suit as the card that I played. So for instance, say I match on clubs here, I'm gonna play a six of clubs. I can also go ahead and discard a seven of clubs because it's higher than that six that I played. Alternatively, if I don't have any clubs, I can also go ahead and match by number by playing a five, in this case, the five of spades. The five will also trigger that ascending run effect, but now I've chosen to play a spade, so I'll play any spades that are higher than the card I just played, for instance, the seven of spades. So let's say that I don't have either a club or a five. What I'm gonna have to do at that point is I do have to draw one card. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw one card. I still can't play this card, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass on my turn. Now, if I would have drawn a card that I could play, I am always free to play that draw immediately if it is a compatible card. So one cool aspect of Crabs in a Bucket is just because I can play doesn't mean I have to. So once I draw a card, even if I can play on this five, but I don't want to for strategic reasons, I can just decide to pass. However, I still do have to at least draw one card. Play will resolve clockwise. So once I finished my turn, the player to my left will take their turn. All effects in the game follow the clockwise pattern. So when we get into Joker Crab rules, just keep that in mind. So, after your first turn, all players unlock the ability to use Joker Crabs, which are suitless cards that have special abilities written at the bottom. This card is called the Clown Crab. It has a special ability called Balloon Release, which allows for me to get rid of one card of each suit, and if I'm able to get rid of all four suits, I can get rid of a fifth card. I've only got three suits in my hand, the hearts, diamonds, and clubs, so I'll get rid of a heart, a diamond, and a club, even though none of those cards matched what was on the top of the discard pile. Remember, no Joker Crabs on your first turn. Additionally, if the last card in your hand is a Joker Crab, you can simply play it without activating its effect. But watch out, if your last card is the Lobster, even if it's your last card, you'll lose the game by playing it. The Lobster has a special ability called Don't Play This Card. With this Lobster, if you play this card, you will automatically lose the game. So try to find clever ways to either get rid of the card without playing it, or put it into other people's hands. If you are able to successfully discard the lobster without actually activating its effect, 
shuffle it back into the deck immediately so that somebody else might have the chance to draw it. So in Crabs in a Bucket, Jacks, Queens, and Kings all have special end turn abilities. One of them is the Joker Ban. Whenever one of these cards, Jacks, Queens, or Kings, are face up on the discard pile, no Joker Crabs can be played. Additionally, at the end of someone's turn, if the player is not able to cover the card with another suited card, then they have to incur a penalty. The Jack penalty is, at the end of an opponent's turn, uh, if they're not able to cover the card, then they have to draw one card from the deck. If I play or discard a queen, and if other players are not able to cover the card, then at the end of their turn, they have to draw a card from my hand, which could result in a win. Finally, if I play or discard a king, then at the end of my opponent's turn, if they're not able to cover it, they have to draw two cards from the deck. If you ever play or discard a jack, queen, or king, you are made the penalizer. If the card that you discarded is at the top of the discard pile at the start of the penalizer's turn, then the penalizer is allowed to exclaim the word Crabolution, allowing for the card to transform into a wild card, in which they can play any suited card on top of it, even if it doesn't match the suit or value. So in Crabs in a Bucket, there are a few special rules, one of which is that there's a hand limit of 10. What that means is when it comes around to my turn, if I have over 10 cards, I can immediately discard down to 10 at the beginning of my turn. So right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cards. So at the beginning of my turn, I can discard two of those cards for free, regardless of what's on top of the discard pile and the joker pile, and then I get to begin my turn at 10. So sometimes in a longer game, you might find yourself in a situation where you need to draw a card, but you've actually ran out of cards in the deck. If this happens, what you're gonna do is set aside the top cards of the Joker pile and the discard pile, and then shuffle together the remaining cards so that you can create a new deck to draw from. Last but not least, the spirit of crabs in a bucket is to try to drag down other players. So table talk is fully allowed if you wanna communicate what's in your hand or what you had seen uh, in another player's hand before you traded, for instance, you are free to do that. And there's also a hard card check. What that means is if it's on my turn and I wanna know how many cards my opponents have, just so I can choose the most strategic card, I can call out for a card check. Rick, how many cards do you have? Uh, I've got 10. Even if someone is close to victory, they're gonna have to call out how many cards they have just so I can make a choice when I play my Joker Crabs. Some of the Joker Crabs effects do resolve based on who has the least amount of cards or a certain amount of cards, so it's useful to know. That was how to play Crabs in a Bucket. Uh, for more information on how to use each individual Joker Crab, please refer to the back of your rule book. We have special pages and special videos on how to use each specific skill. Thanks, have fun.